we end up exhuming the remains of close to 140 kids that were all in this very small one-room house. We were exhuming all these little dresses and whatever they have in their pockets. Those kind of details are actually the ones that kind of uh, devastate you. They're, they're very, very hard, yeah. I started doing this forensic work on human rights cases since 1984, when democracy returned to Argentina after quite brutal military uh, government. I was a student, most of us were, just finishing very close to graduating. It wasn't something that we were thinking, oh, let's form an international organization that will do this globally or anything like that. It was more like, if we want to be consistent with what we think and what we believed, we thought we couldn't say no. In December 1981, the Salvador army entered into the hamlet of El Mozote, uh, as well as in other five hamlets that were nearby, separated children, women and men, execute them, burn their houses and everything, removing any possibility of civilian support of guerrillas. At that time when we arrived, you could still see human bones in different parts of the houses. These red flags indicate where we found all the spent cartridges. This wall here was where the victims were probably lined up before being executed. We were just amazed by what we were finding. We had never worked on a, on a, on a case uh, of that scale at that time. I see the work that we do in different parts of the world as a part of a reparation process. Where something horrible had happened, we cannot fix, obviously, what happened, but we can provide some solace by providing information, sometimes returning back the remains of missing people to their loved ones, which we have learned how important it is. These are crimes that often, you know, started as political crimes and uh, part of a political situation. And so you learn to wait and push as much as you can so that the evidence can be heard, right, and have it stay in court. But it's a work that requires a lot of patience. Often we, we felt, uh, you know, a very strong feeling of frustration. It was a very small courtroom, very close to where the massacre had happened. Um, and we were testifying something that we thought it was never going to happen. We were all kind of like, OK, you know, now this is what we were supposed to have done, you know, 30 years ago. These processes never end, so we, we never feel complete, you know, closure or, or you know, rarely. <laughs>